Henry coming to you from the Money Lounge Studios and today I have for you guys a Salmon Great Deck profile but it isn't just any Salmon Great Deck profile it is Sky Striker Salmon Greats and the reason why I think this cluster of two engines is good is because the Salmon Greats are very linear I would say and they don't offer much when playing into hand traps whereas the Sky Striker cards are very good into playing with in into interrupts and with cards like Eagle Booster to play around a, uh, a Dingursu, sending your, your Sunlight Wolf in the extra monster zone going second or going first and having an extra interrupt with a set Widow Anchor or a set Shark Cannon can be pretty good. And it's also used in an extender to summon a Fire and Kagari. So there's lots of synergies in which I will get into more in the deck profile. So that is all I really have to say. It's very much Theory Brood. I really don't play Salmon Greats a whole lot in competitive play, I mostly play Thunder, but when I get a chance to play a little bit for fun, sometimes I like to toy, toy around with different versions of Salmon Greats. I very rarely play the version that plays just 16 hand traps, just because I know those decks uh, that use a bunch of hand traps can win, but the whole point of playtesting is to see different strategies that can potentially be better. So, enough rambling on. For the Salmon Great list, we play 3 Foxy. 3 Spinny and 1 Gazelle, of course accompanied with the 1 of Jack Jaguar and the 1 Falco. So not too much to say here, I don't play Sea Archiver in this list, so there's a little bit more dependency on Foxy and Spinny just as level 3's. However, I do think that this is all you need for Salmon Greats. Of course you're worried about cards like Called by the Grave and Needy Crow and Ghost Bell and things like that, but I don't think playing more of them necessarily helps with that just because of the fact that your turn is pretty much stopped and having a second copy of a card doesn't really do anything because they're all hard ones for turns. So I don't play Desires, so I think one Jack Jaguar is fine. You don't want to brick with them. And then of course one Falco to occasionally make a Dweller, but mostly to set your roars and rages and stuff like that. So that's it for the Salmon Greats. And then for the Cybers cards, I play one Lady Diva. Not too much to say there. Three Flame Buffalo. I think that this is the best normal summon in the game just because all of these cards are extenders so this just literally gets you two cards for free. So if you build your deck to just play a bunch of extenders like Will of the Salmon Greats, this card is really good. I think that where a lot of people go wrong is they, they don't play cards like Will, which I don't really know how people do well without cards like Will of the Salmon Great, that card is insane, but Flame Buffalo is really good and as long as you're playing the right extenders and the right utility cards, it should get you there. Then, for the final engine card, is 3 Micro Coder. So, for those of you who don't know, uh, Micro Coder, if I can get it to focus, uh, Micro Coder has an effect where if you are linking off a Cybers monster for a Code Talker, which we do play one Code Talker in the extra deck here, it could be any Code Talker monster, it could be Decode Talker. But Code Talker as the Ling 2 is just the easiest one to make out of the gate. And if you're using a Cybers monster for the Link Summon of a Code Talker, Link Monster, you can use this card from your hand as Link Material. And then if it's used from the hand as Link Material for a Code Talker monster, you can search any Sign at Spell or Trap. So that, of course, leads you to the cards like Sign at Mining and, of course, Sign at Backdoor. And at one point we were even playing the Cyanite Fusion as another target to make uh, the, fu the, um, the Violet Chimera. But Micro Coder just offers a lot, of, a lot of utility and consistency in this deck. Just because it allows, it helps you with the getting out of the starting gate with uh, searching your salad monsters. And also in the grind game because it can search you backdoor. And backdoor provides a unique function where not only do you get to search a card, you also get to play through cards like Impermanence and Valor with uh, missing targeting effects. And also, because the card comes back on your next turn, it, it ensures you a monster to link into a uh, card like Crusadia Avermax on your turn 3 play. So, this card is really good and uh, it's a lot better than people give it credit for. So, uh, 3 Micro Coder. And then, um, for our traditional hand drop, we play 3 Ash Blossom, Enjoy a Spring. And that is accompanied with uh, two 
actual tra hand traps uh, to infinite impermanence. So, five hand traps, you need some defense, but I think when you go to numbers like 14 or 16 hand traps, it becomes too much. So, that's it for the hand traps. So, the rest of these cards just help us give us more cards rather than take away cards from our opponent. We're playing three Synet Mining. Of course, this card is really good getting to any card in your deck. We play three Engage. Having, getting the draw off of this card is really crucial, which you actually do get a lot of the times, probably sometimes more so than Orcus does, just because you just play so many good cards, like, like Signet Mining, and Signet Mining, again, also searchable off of the Microcoder. So as long as you open Microcoder, a Cyburst, and any other spell, you get the, uh, well, like with Engage, you get the draw off Engage because you are searching Signet Mining, pitching a spell for Signet Mining, then you're going to go Engage, get Hornet Drones, Hornet Drones add back Engage, and then the second Engage will get you a draw. So uh, this card is really good. And then for the targets, we play five targets for, for Engage. We play um, Afterburners, Eagle Booster, Hornet Drones, Sh uh, Shark Cannon, and Widow Anchor. I don't think that this is like way too much. I think that Widow Anchor is a generically good card. It helps you play through cards like Dingursu, Colossus, Galatea, anything. Uh, Shark Cannon, of course, hitting all the, all the uh, Orcus. And because Orcus is so popular right now, I don't think that meaning a stray Shark Cannon is that bad. It's just like another DD Crow that you can use. So yeah, this card's pretty solid to even hard draw. And then Hornet Drones, it gets you to a Fire that helps you make a Sunlight Wolf or a Hita. And overall, it's really not that bad of a card to draw. Eagle Booster is a last minute addition. This card is really good when protecting your Sunlight Wolf. A lot of times you'll see people use Circle to protect their own Sunlight Wolf instead of searching a card. And that's because protecting your Sunlight Wolf is so important. As soon as that card stays on the field for your turn, and, and it allows you to use your Bailings and Grave to protect a different card, that's two cards on your field that are staying on the field. And as long as you establish your advantage and then maintain it, you're winning that game. So if you Eagle Booster preemptively on your um, on your on your Sunlight Wolf, then you should be winning that game because you just get two cards on your turn from the Sunlight Wolf, and that's just a lot of cards. So uh, Eagle Booster is really good, and then Afterburners is really good against Rogue. Maybe this is like the one that I would cut in the main deck, maybe side one. But this card is really good in general. You can just hit cards like Inspector Border, just random cards that just hard for salad to get over so that's it for the sky striker package and then for um, superior extenders we play two will this card is just way too good not to play i think this card is like one of the reasons why salmon grades is so good this card is like almost a better soul charge for salmon grade just because of the fact that turn one it's a good extender to have just to ensure your play especially if you get hand trapped but then like turns two or three, this card becomes soul charge. Like it's insane. This is like very similar to how Instant Fusion is in Prank It. It's like really good. And then for the rest of the one ups we play Solomon Great Circle. Of course as a good starter. Sign up backdoor. Really cool thing you can do with sign up backdoor is like you can you can go into Code Talker and then search sign up backdoor for the microcoder, then backdoor your code talker. And you could search like a foxy or uh, you could search another microcoder. And then like you could just end with like so many cards in hand. And then if you have one extender, you could just still do your play. But especially if you if you have engaged, you could play conservatively and end with like six cards in hand with like two sets. And then on your on your um, on your next turn, turn three, you get your code talker back, and then you can immediately go into like a heat or something like that. It's just lets your Let's your grind game a lot better as well. It's a good card to draw in the grind game. So, uh, sign up the back door is pretty good. And then, of course, we play uh, one upstart for consistency. And then, as a um, as an engine requirement, we play the sanctuary. And then, of course, the last two cards are a roar and a rage. So, nothing too extravagant there with the Salmon Great cards. We more or less let the Sky Striker cards do the work for us. And then for the extract, it's a little bit different. For the Link 1s, we play one Kagari. It's really cool as a fire. Fun fact, you can recycle this back with Sunlight Wolf and then get your drones off again, like turn three, and then get another Kagari, add back another engage. And because you play so many targets, your engages are never dead. So Kagari is pretty solid. 
and then uh, Link Karibo. The reason why I put Link Karibo is because if you open with uh, nothing except for Engage and Microcoder, or if you open Drone, you, you can search Drones with Engage, and then you can Horn Drones, summon a token, and since it's a level 1, you can turn it into Link Karibo, and then you can link off the, link, the Microcoder and the Link Karibo for a Code Talker. And then because this was used as link material for a code talker, then you get a search for sign up mining. And the reason why you need to play link rebo is because you need to use a cybers for the link summon of a code talker for microcoder to go off. So that's why you play that. And then you play two balances. Unfortunately, only two. I wish this was more. However, you can't really fit it in the extra deck space with playing the two targets for the uh, the sky striker package. So two balances only. Three sunlight wolf is just you need to play the three. And then, of course, the Hita and the Phoenix. <coughs> Nothing much to say there. And then, of course, the Code Talker as sort of a requirement for playing the Micro Coder. And then, of course, the two Heat Leo for back row. I think om almost a staple at this point in Salad is Avermax. The reason why I think this card is so staple in Salad is because of the fact that it's like the best card that you can use after going into a Heat Leo and spinning a card. Because if you go into like an Appaloosa that only has two negates and doesn't have much attack, you also don't really have room for like Appaloosa and Borlo to Burl Sword. So this is like one of the best cards when it comes to having a balance of offense and defense. Just an overall good card and you have like easily access to extra deck cards with bailings and, and Code Talker and things like that. It'll never be dead. And then uh, the two XDs that you might expect, the Stally on the Dweller. So, anyway, guys, uh, not too much to explain here. If you guys want in depth explanations, you guys could put it in the comment section below. This is my first video on Bimani Lounge, and because it is, I want to take an opportunity to say uh, thank you for welcoming me to the channel. I hope to see you guys in more of my videos and hearing back from you guys. And if you guys want even more in-depth explanations on my card choices or just ask me questions in general about the game, you can join the chat in the Money Lounge. We can link it in the description below. And hope to hear from you shortly. I'll see you guys soon. Peace, guys. Peace.